Hi, everyone. I am so excited to see all of you. There are 63 of us Smithies on this call today, which is just so exciting. Um, I am, as Susan just mentioned, Christy Capone Kennedy. I am a Smith alum, class of 2010. I lived in Albright House, um, right across the street from where I'm sitting now. Uh, and I'm just really happy to be here with all of you and to welcome you all to the first session of our Spring Network at Work series, From Resignation to Reimagination, Love Languages at Work with career coach Imani Missouri, class of 08. Um, so before I introduce Imani and we get to our session today, I wanted to just share a bit about these workshops, a key element of the programming offered for the Smith Business Network. So Network at Work events are virtual interactive workshops offering professional skill building and networking with your fellow Smithies. And this spring, we are focusing on the Great Resignation, which refers to the widespread disruption in workplaces across sectors, with Amani's today, session today being the first of three workshops we will offer on this topic. So this disruption in the workplace presents an opportunity to reimagine your path. Our hope is that you will come away from these workshops with concrete tips and tools that you can leverage to feel grounded in this unusual moment in time so you can reach your professional goals. But we also hope that you will come away from our time together today with new connections to your fellow Smithies. This is the beauty of what we are building in the Smith Business Network. We are building careers, we are facilitating connections, and we are leaning into our community. The tagline of the Smith Business Network actually is Careers Connection Community. So this community, our Smith Network, is a powerful resource we all have access to as Smith alums. We have a network of 53,000 Smithies eager to connect, open doors, and provide support so we can all dream big in community with one another. And we will provide you with opportunities like our session today to put this network to work for you. So. Without further ado, I'll introduce our host for today's session, Imani Missouri. Imani is the owner of Faith Forward LLC, providing faith increasing coaching and consulting services for altruistic social impact organizations, groups, and individuals seeking to embrace their higher calling in the areas of personal and professional development, community engagement, equity, diversity, and inclusion. She is also the creator, host, and producer I don't know when she sleeps, <laughs> a Forward 40 podcast, which highlights the experiences of 40 women of color on the rise in nonprofit and social enterprise sectors. So Imani, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm so happy to have you leading the session and I will turn it over to you now to get our workshop started. Thank you so much, Christy. And it's so great to be in full community with a whole bunch of Smithies today. Um, you could be anywhere else in the world, but we are here with each other right now. So I'm so, so grateful. So I'm about to share my screen. Can everyone see it? Yes, thumbs up, wonderful. Yes. Okay, all right. So our time together from resignation to reimagination love languages at work. I believe some of you are here because you're familiar with the love languages. Even if you aren't familiar, it is okay. We're gonna do a brief overview. Um, and the goal is for you to see how this can be applied to one, your workplace coping with certain challenges that you may have, but then also building culture um, and learning how to advocate for yourself and your needs uh, in your career. So the show flow, I used to work in operations and uh, whenever we had an event, it was a show flow <laughs> of all the things. So this is our show flow of our time together today. I will do a brief introduction of myself. I would like to invite you all to uh, include some community agreements that we would like to lift up and hold for our time together. I'll do a brief overview of love languages um, do a snapshot on the impact that the pandemic has had on life and work. And then we're going to have an activity uh, where you are going to go into breakout rooms. And then we will close with a closing activity. So this is what I would like to call hashtag not your average introduction. Um, so here are a few of my love me lives. <laughs> 
Uh, I love the intersection of faith and personal and professional development. I am also a lover of young adult fiction. I am so ashamed to tell you how many books I have right, right now from the library um, that are overdue. <laughs> but I've been given a pass for returning them. Um, and I got, you know, I would say the last good one that I read um, was called Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany Jackson. If you want to jot that down, Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany Jackson. Um, it's a little criminal suspense as well. Uh, I also love soca music. So part of my family is from the Caribbean, from the West Indies. And whenever I am down, up in between, soca music is what just truly, truly encourages me and just breathes life, uh, more life into me in my day. Uh, Thai Garden, I had to include that uh, for the Smithies that are here. Um, that was, I would say, an addiction that I had when I was on campus, <laughs> going to Thai Garden to get my Thai food. Um, and I also love purpose and mission-driven work. Um, and helping professionals um, in that space. So now, just a little bit of Viola, right? Like, let's bring it in, let's bring it in. Uh, so community agreements. Yes, we are here, we're all Smithies, but we're coming in with different experiences and life, work, and then also with our experiences as Smith alums. So I would like to invite you to just put in the chat what is one thing that you would like to bring into this space so that we all can acknowledge it? So for example, uh, maybe you are bringing to this space hope. Maybe you are bringing to this space respect. What, are, what is one thing that you're bringing to this space that we can just honor and reflect on in our time together? And I'll just give you all about a minute to do that. And I'll um, call out some of the ones that I see. Openness, self-care, wonderful support compassion, curiosity, listening, connection, yes. Aloha, love it. <laughs> A joy for learning from others, loving yourself, fear, okay. Thank you for acknowledging that community, optimism, active listening, thank you, thank you, thank you. Curiosity again, love it, love it, love it, okay. And you can continue to, to add more to the chat, but just wanted to just give you the opportunity to be in community and add that to the space because this is not a time where you're just listening to me speak. We are here to be in community with each other and also connect and support each other. I'm gonna exit out this. So love languages. Are you also seeing the chat screen as well on your end? No? Okay, cool. Um, so love languages overview. As I mentioned, some of you may be familiar with it. Uh, Dr. Gary Chapman, um, he came up with five love languages. And I pulled this screenshot uh, from a tweet that I thought was pretty cool. Um, that kind of gives you like an overview of what it is. So one of the love languages is words of affirmation, right? This is a good burrito. <laughs> Acts of service. I made you a burrito. <laughs> Gifts. Here's a burrito. Quality time. Let's go get some burritos together. Physical touch. Arms around a person wrapped in a warm hug like a burrito. So with the five love languages, uh, they are centered on our relationships, our interpersonal relationships, uh, with people, right? To help us better understand how it is that we express, but then also receive love. So as to help us better communicate with our loved ones, uh, our partners, avoid conflict as much as possible, um, and also grow closer in, in relationship. So I know you're wondering like, okay, well, what does this have to do with work? So I know we haven't been under a rock, right? <laughs> the pandemic let us know that there was this tension and revelation about life and work. And I purposefully put life before work because that is what was coming to the fore. And people were frustrated, right? Just like you see in this GIF, 
how are you mad at me, right? Like, how are you mad at me for what it is that I'm experiencing right now? The stressors that I'm, I'm going through with family, uh, with work, everyone was being impacted and still is being impacted by it, but in different ways. And people took the opportunity to express that on LinkedIn, right? So during the past couple of years with the great resignation, here were some of the things that, you know, came about. So people were voluntarily leaving their jobs, voluntarily. Um, and I will admit, I got out right before, <laughs> right before the pandemic um, at, at my last employer. Um, and then you were also seeing folks like in the restaurant, hospitality industry, because there were changes that were happening in the industry, just say, you know what, this is not even worth it. So they were leaving the industry for higher pay. Um, in December of last year, uh, roughly 6.3 million people were hired into new jobs out of a total of 10.9 million job openings, leaving 4.6 million roles unfulfilled, unfilled, excuse me. Um, so even though there's openings available, people are still choosing other things over just work and any work. Here, um, this is pulled from USA Today, right? Um, people were expressing, you know, like they were concerned about how their employers were treating them and still are, right? They quit because of this work-life balance, or again, what I like to say, life-work balance. Even though we spend about like one third or maybe even more even more, right, over the past couple of years at work, doing work, um, it has taken a toll on people. And also one third of workers quit their jobs to launch businesses. Yes, absolutely, burnout is real, burnout is real. So I'm just gonna report live from the desk of this session right now. <laughs> And I'm going to share some reflections of how people have felt impacted by the past couple of years. So here's the first one, right? And I chose not to in, you know, include people's names, but there are also some other clues there if you wanted to check them out um, yourself, right? <laughs> um, yes, and I'm still seeing more comments uh, about healthcare, right? So this one is about bereavement. Um, people lost loved ones and still are losing loved ones. And there were employers that were not really understanding or respecting that. So in this one, uh, this uh, professional on LinkedIn said, we suddenly lost my dad five years ago today. It was the worst day of my life. When we lose someone we love, support from employers is critical on our journey to grieve and heal. It's time for leaders to step up and fight for bereavement leave. Give more time off, expand the definition of family, don't ask for proof of death. Offer grief counseling. Take the individual lead. Another sound off. And this is someone who is in the leadership space. A friend called me frustrated. She had just had a meeting with her manager asking what else she had to do to get promoted. Her manager told her that she needed more time in her position. I'm quite sure some of us have heard that. She was confused. So she asked, time for what? The manager simply responded, well, when I was in your position, it took a while for me to get promoted. That answer was not helpful for my frustrated friend. If your manager gives you an abstract response, that isn't related to a deliverable or accomplishment in order to get promoted, then you're not getting promoted. Saying more time isn't specific. It's likely a brush off. And then she goes on to say, has this happened to you? And then the third sound off, 
that I wanted to, um, yes, time, uh, the time thing all, you know, tends to happen often. Uh, the third sound off that I wanted to bring to bear is that even in the pandemic, there was also like a triple pandemic, right? There was the economy, there was COVID-19, but then also um, racial injustice, right? And this is a reflection just on DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, equity, diversity, inclusion, and also justice, right? So um, this person posted, recently I surveyed a select group of corporate black women about their experience across industries and levels from healthcare to DEI, to consulting amongst others, in business for themselves or some combination of the two. With the intention of talking to five, less than five people. However, I got much more than I had hoped for. Candid and insightful responses, eager participants grateful to be heard and acknowledged, and much more. One question asked was, what do you find frustrating about being a Black woman in the current corporate environment? And some of the things that came up, micro dosing of professional invalidation, lack of responsibility and accountability, pervasiveness of overwork, perceived influence uh, and leadership positions in DNI. So I know that probably uh, resonated with some um, some folks. I just would like to one. Let's just take a a breather. Probably with some things that were triggering um, from your past experiences or even your current experience. And if there was anything in particular that you feel comfortable uh, putting in the chat, whether it was sound off one uh, that was about bereavement and grief. Um, number two. Uh, you know, the manager communicated, oh, more time. And three, just um, the, the impact of even identity in the workplace um, and essentially kind of being sold a bag of goods <laughs> that you will have more agency in your role than, uh, than not. And it just um, increasing the amount of stress. So one, two, or three, you could put that in the chat. You could put all, all of the above. Uh, but just want to give you a moment um, to, to put that in the chat. I see number three. One. Mm -hmm. Yes. Comment, not providing the tools for the employee to be successful. Yes. And not protecting them from toxic workplace. Yes. Ones, twos. Yes. Yes. Yep. Someone else had to jump through a lot of hoops to create space to support a grieving coworker. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So that was a lot. And again, you all may be experiencing that right now. You may be in the thick of it. So this is where we move into or segue a bit into kind of like this reimagination. Um, the five love languages was written as I mentioned about our, you know, partner relationships, interpersonal relationships, intimate relationships. But again, we spend a vast majority of our time, sometimes even more with our colleagues and at work. Henceforth, five languages of appreciation in the workplace. And I have my trusty copy right here. Um, so some folks have asked, okay, well, if I've already taken the love language assessment, doesn't that just mean that that's my language of appreciation at work? Not necessarily, not necessarily. So, uh, both Dr. Chapman and, um, Paul White go on to just share that, you know, they, they surveyed, um, and they did a study with adjunct faculty, and in it, they found that um, only 385 of the participants had the same primary uh, language on their love language, but then also um, on their appreciation um, inventory, right? And when looking at the results more closely, they found the following, 69% of the faculty members had their primary love language as either their first or second highest language of appreciation. And then they just say, you know, while there's similarities, the bottom line is your love languages and languages of appreciation will always be one and the same. But most of us will have commonalities between the two. 
So it depends on the setting, right? Um, how you are in relationship, an intimate relationship with someone can truly, truly vary uh, in terms of your relationship with your colleagues and at work. So that's, that can also factor in that when you um, do kind of like the MBA inventory, you know, for um, appreciation at work to really see like there can be some variation there that's not necessarily the, the same. So I know that I showed the tweet earlier, right? And some of you probably had a chance to look at the pre-reading uh, for an article that I wrote, um, pretty much challenging, um, especially employers, managers, um, and also, um, you know, just employees to really reflect on how this can be at play, given uh, the changes that we all have been experiencing over the past couple of years. So words of affirmation, right? That is when you uh, appreciate a positive message from another person. Quality time is carried out when you're given your undivided attention. So not when you're in a meeting with someone and you're looking at your phone, <laughs> but you're giving your undivided attention. Um, and there's different dialects uh, that they note in the book uh, that are most effective to active listening skills. Then there's the acts of service and similar to servant leadership, right? Uh, where for those that this is their primary language, they appreciate it when others just step in and support them on projects. They do note though, um, that it could, it could signal um, something else. If you don't know if that is a person's <laughs> language, right? It could signal uh, something that's a bit condescending, right? Or you're just assuming that a person is just inadequate in whatever it is that they're doing. So you're stepping in. So you want to be really, really uh, mindful about that. Uh, tangible gifts. So they are different from raises and bonuses. And I'm so grateful that they called this out because even those that have been surveyed uh, for leaving the past couple of years, it wasn't even, money wasn't even the primary reason. It was because of balance on life and work. And also they just wanted something that was more meaningful. They wanted more meaningful work, even if it meant at the expense of lower pay. And then there's physical touch, which they don't delve too much into it because again, with workplace, you gotta be very, very careful of that. Uh, but there are other ways that you can communicate um, touch uh, even virtually um, and that you are more of a, a person to person, you, you know, like being uh, in close proximity uh, with people. So, I would like for us to engage in a poll. Again, there's words of affirmation, acts of service, tangible gifts, quality time, and physical touch. I would like to, if you were just to give a self-assessment of yourself, where do you think you would land in terms of your primary language? So acts of service, you enjoy when others do things for you, step in, words of affirmation. You love when people are affirming you in words um, and also in writing, tangible gifts. You enjoy the gifts and that is okay. Quality time, um, you enjoy that uninterrupted time. Uh, all attention is on you and on the topic at hand uh, and then physical touch. So Christy, where did we land with our results? Oh, you can't see the results on your I end. can't. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, okay, so we have 29% of us here today, acts of service is the love language. 37% of us appreciate words of affirmation. That's mine too, but I couldn't participate because I'm the pollster. 8% <laughs> um, tangible gifts. 25% quality time and 2% physical touch. Wow. That's really, really interesting. Really, really interesting. I, I voted. Um, and you did? Okay. Yeah. 
What's words, yours? Words of affirmation. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. I'm going to take the poll down now. Yeah. Good? Thank you. Thank you so much, Christy. Oh, here we go. Share results. Can you see that? Yeah. Everyone okay, can- great. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. okay. Well, thank uh, you all for participating. So we have more words of affirmation. Um, and I think the second one was acts of service and then quality time. That's uh, right. And then gifts and uh, physical touch were on the lower end. Okay. All right. So I believe, because again, this was your self-assessment. So we're going to have a little bit more time to do a self-assessment and reflection. So it's going to be game time. <laughs> and this is not a competition. It is not a competition. It is a time to engage with each other um, and to connect and reflect. So you're going to join a breakout room, okay? In the breakout room, the activity includes um, a networking bingo. So if you've ever played human bingo, um, this is going to be your jam, okay? Money. So this is going to, yes, yes, yes. Could you, we can actually show the bingo card. If you can stop sharing your screen, we'll put the bingo card up on the screen so people can see what the activity will look like. Sure. So okay. give us one second, everyone, to swap tech a little bit. So Amani will stop sharing her screen and then um, we're going to pop. Oh, look at that. OK, now you can see what we're talking about. Boom. OK. OK, thank you. So when you're in your breakout, um, there's going to be an introductory activity uh, that's on the first first page. Right. And then you're going to participate in this bingo. And you're going to mark, not necessarily physically mark, we are doing our best virtually here, right? So just kind of like write it down, like where, where you kind of landed and see if you, you have bingo, uh, five across, any, anywhere. And guided by your breakout room host, there are going to be a few facilitated questions for you um, to reflect on in the small group. Um, let's get to some debrief. So I am going to call on our first, right, Amani, you ready for a debrief? Okay, you're muted too, just so you know. Yes. Um, and I think that was intentional. So, um, okay, so Emily Frank, yeah. can you share? Absolutely. So we had a very strong theme um, in our room of um, the... Um, sensation of, of being valued or not valued and how that can be such a, a miss with the appreciation language that um, when people in a workspace are mansplaining or um, not seeing and honoring and valuing um, the contributions of um, the, particularly the folks in our room, uh, left them feeling very, un, uh, very unvalued, very undervalued, um, and um, has been a, a really big contributing factor to burnout that some folks are feeling. Uh, with that, we also had pieces that were um, kind of around uh, being really overworked um, and a little bit of um, a, a conversation around sort of generations at work. Um, and, and sort of how to navigate the differences in what different generations on the whole uh, tend to, um, to, to seek as their own appreciation language. But it's interesting to me that we had such a strong theme of that kind of being seen and heard as so essential in the workplace, which uh, I think is, is lacking in a lot of places these days, at least based on our room. Thank you, Emily. And I'm curious, um, this uh, lack of being seen and heard more so, you know, during the past couple of years or, you know, was so, this? Yeah, we didn't necessarily get into it, but it sounds like some of it's been cumulative. Um, and I suspect, and the folks from the room can weigh in, but I suspect it's been kind of exacerbated 
in this mm -hmm. very virtual setting these days. But for I think for a lot of right. folks in, in the room, it was kind of, you know, getting older as a contributing factor to that, that, you know, if you're of a certain age and you sort of present as female, then we stop hearing your voice at a particular time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's hear from another breakout. Wonderful. Okay, Gail, you are up. We're just so you know, you're being spotlit while you share the debrief. So, okay. um, just okay, you got go. it. I see myself. Um, I would say uh, similarly to Emily's group. Um, there was there was a lot of discussion about um, the stress that's been created by the pandemic and just having a tough time with layoffs and um, increased workloads, um, feeling isolated if you're working full time at home and you're not used to that. Um, and so I, I asked a lot about what what brought them to this um, this presentation. And I think there's a real feeling of it's a time for change. You know, people are looking for some kind of change. Sometimes it's been brought on by a personal situation in their lives. They, they may have a family issue that's created more stress with their work life. Um, and so they've had to deal with that. But um, <clears throat> in general, I think there was a feeling of um, trying to find something different or better, um, a way to um, continue their work, but also a way to do it differently, more successfully. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gail. Yes, um, what resonates with me just about doing things differently or better, right, uh, is that folks have been seeking uh, more meaningful and purposeful work. Um, and even with the activity of even reflecting on um, the ways in which you express or receive appreciation, it connects to your values, right? Like it is, um, it better positions you and they're gonna be um, one of the fellow uh, presenters uh, that's here. is gonna have a session on values, right? So um, this can also connect to how you can convey your values um, and what it is that you need. Thank you. Thanks, Gail. Um, Sabine, do you share? Yes, hello. Um, so we reflected more on what marks we did not hit on the bingo than marks we actually did hit. Um, I think primarily the theme of not necessarily feeling valued um, and, under, and then seeing the bingo and seeing all the different ways that you can feel appreciated and valued in the workplace. and just the reflection of, oh, is this, this is not happening in my workplace um, or to me in general. Um, and then another theme for us was kind of discuss, in discussing love languages, the difference between um, our personal love language versus our work love language. And then also receiving love language, your receiving love language versus the way you give love or show up for other people. Um, and a, a theme that I'm adding that I didn't discuss with my group was just generally thank yous. I think thank yous can go a long way. And um, throughout when people were talking, I, I kept hearing that like, oh, thank yous. Did you receive a thank you card? Did you send a thank you email? Did you receive yeah. a thank you? Did you get acknowledgement for doing X, Y, Z? Yes. Yes, thank you, Sabine. Thank yous go a long way. That's exactly why I included that on the video card because, you know, sometimes uh, with the levels of stress, right? People can be so transactional in the work because they can be so laser focused on getting it to the end goal that they forget <laughs> about the interpersonal uh, relationships uh, that they have amongst their colleagues um, and just kind of like the culture that a thank you, a thank you really, really does go a long way. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Can never say thank you enough. Um, <laughs> okay, next up is Alexis Clare. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, so Sabine had very similar points um, as to our group brought out. Um, so I'll share a couple of what we talked about with the bingo card and then those two big themes, um, which are quite similar. The couple points from the bingo card, the work happy hour is not our jam. Um, I personally love them, but the group in general is like, mm, not so much. But we did talk partially because it's like, I have a limited amount of time 
outside of work to do all the other things that I need to do and want to do and have responsibilities for. And so we talked about what are different ways during the work time frame that I can still build that relationship based trust with my colleagues. Uh, so it's like Zoom lunches, Zoom coffees, and of course, um, and just phone calls, because a lot of us are feeling screen fatigue. I was like, I'm sick of seeing my face so big on my screen. Um, so that's something we kind of workshopped. We also talked about the supervisory checkups and what does it look like when they're sincere? Like, how does that actually feel? Um, what is like full listening? What is distracted listening? What does present mean to us? So that was really helpful. And one of our members is uh, loves being the job fairy, job birthday fairy. Um, and you made some really incredible points about how it's a, uh, um, spotlights uh, individuals in a way that's not too um, work based, like it's outside of project, and it's it was just really lovely to hear. And then we also talked about thank yous and how they really go a long way. My boss does like one off emails, and I love them. <laughs> and it's just four words like thank you, Alexis, cheers, or something like that. Um, and and then the two themes that Sabine touched on that we also touched on is how do you reconcile a personal love language with a organization love language or like the culture of your work love language and when what happens when those clash and like what do you do about that how do you can you balance those um and then lastly uh what do i need versus what can i provide and when it comes to love languages in the workspace and how are you able to identify other people's and how are you able to give while also asking for what you need thank beautiful. you beautiful thank you so much alexis a lot of what you just shared resonated with me. Um, happy hours are not my jam. And that is why I put it on the board. <laughs> it used to drive me up the wall uh, with a supervisor that I had that she was more quality time, but that wasn't my appreciation or love language or in the workplace, right? So the way in which she wanted to connect was happy hours. And I was like, uh, we can do this during our check-in and check up. Um, so to the point that you raised about like reconciling between the personal and versus kind of like the culture of the workplace, there's an example that's in the book, right? Where um, uh, there's someone who he says, look, my primary is uh, quality time. And that is with my wife. But when I'm at work, I'm not trying to spend more time, <laughs> more time than needed <laughs> with everyone, right? Um, so the way that I um, kind of did it, because um, he used the example of like the after work things, I had to gradually work to respectfully decline. Like I have other commitments. I have, you know, like it's about balance. And I also communicated and conveyed balance is important to me. So I have to go tend to this other thing. That created some, some tension, I'll, I'll admit. It created some tension, exactly, boundaries, right? But some people don't know boundaries, but that does not mean that you still don't communicate them. It's still very important for you to communicate them. Thanks, Imani and Alexis Claire. Okay, Melody? Well, we had an interesting theme in our group since when people were talking about how their love languages weren't being respected or acknowledged um, at work, three of the five people in our group had left their jobs because they were feeling unappreciated um, and that they, you know, disrespected, that they weren't getting any affirmation or appreciation at their job. So, so that's like 60% of the group, right? Um, so that's, that's, it goes to show why this kind of thing is important that Amani is teaching us about. Um, I think the other theme besides things that have already been talked about, you know, people feeling overworked or feeling undervalued, um, is the theme that I kept hearing is that people have become more protective of their own time and have learned to value their own time, right? Where maybe in the past they would go that, you know, extra 30% to do the project and get it in by the deadline and, you know, push themselves, even if it meant, you know, 20 more hours of overtime. People, it sounded like we're becoming learning to value and do more balance, right, for themselves. And I, I thought it sounded like a pretty healthy thing. 
and yeah. other, people, other people in the group feel free to chime in. Thank you for sharing that, Melody. I see someone in the comment love to hear more about how to learn about the love languages at play at a potential organization. Yes, uh, Sarah. So there is actually, unless someone from Melody's group has to, uh, would like to chime in, um, there is actually a inventory that organizations and companies can take. Like if a manager or a company wants to really explore this, they can do it. I mean, there's a price tag with it, but they can do it. Um, and it's an investment. And again, it has to come from the, the leaders have to see that it's worthwhile, especially if you're seeing that to Melody's point, right? Say if that was like one organization and they're seeing turnover like that. I, I would say that if I was the manager or if I was HR, let me figure out what's really going on here. You know, like having, and not just having exit conversations just for exit sake right. and not doing anything with it, but really find out why are people leaving? And if they're leaving because they feel underappreciated or not valued, then it's something, there's something there that needs to change um, in the culture. Um, and recommendations on how to get uh, your boss to discuss love languages in the workplace. Yes, I'm going to share a little bit more about that um, as we close. Um, yes. So let's kind of do one more. One more group and it's a double host group. So Esther and Anne, you are up to report out from room six. Esther, I'll start and then you can add in what I lost. I didn't cover. Um, so we had themes too of empathy and it was really that there was lack of empathy and the boss was not demonstrating understanding or clear actions either in protecting people or setting them up for success. So one of our participants actually felt like she was becoming the interior office therapist herself to try <laughs> to emphasize that empathy. Um, there was a lot of uh, energy around some um, supervisory check-ins and check-ups and how uncomfortable those were and what how they could be done better. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We did have a really bad, a lot of response about happy hours. Nobody liked them. Again, the boundary balance thing was really critical. Um, there was a lot of energy around working independently and you know enjoying just being having the time to focus on what they needed to be done, as you all have said before, because time is of the essence. Um, so in the DIY square in the middle just really resonated with people like, yeah, we like to just do it ourselves and check in when we have to, but not really. But I will say one of our participants um, who was a supervisor herself had some really great um, experience with thank you cards that she received from somebody who reported to her and that she also um, gives cards out that they have, that they check in and then they have kind of a um, uh, a, an interior bingo game and then they, the winners get their uh, gift cards and she demonstrates and uses <clears throat> open door policy online um, a lot. And we talked a little bit about the boundaries for that, but still that was really effective that she could have really good open door policy even virtually and that was well received. Um, Esther, what did, I, what did I leave out? Yeah, that's a great summary, Anne. Um, definitely that like interplay between independence and support. Um, and I mean, this is a great way to talk about how support and community looks different for everyone. That's the whole point of this love languages conversation. Um, it was really interesting for me to hear from a lot of people in our group about how happy hour is really not it for them. Um, as someone who works totally remotely, I've been to one happy hour and I enjoyed it to give the other side of things. Um, but again, that's the point of this, right? To learn about how different people interact differently with different parts of creating community or support at work and different things are important to everyone. So uh, that was a great discussion that we had that really showcased that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, it feels good to uh, be in good company because it felt very isolating uh, when I was the one that was dodging the happy hours. <laughs> But it feels good to know um, that there are others that feel the same. I just put in the chat, um, so the MBA inventory, motivating by appreciation. Um, and it has, again, inventory like for the employer, um, also for the book. So if 
it really gets to that point. You can make it as a suggestion, um, even for uh, even for your manager, and also consider um, the option of creating an activity such as this, right? Like some some companies, organizations have a birthday theory. Maybe you can do something that is uh, connected with the department that's around like boosting morale or culture. Like it's a, you can introduce it as a culture building activity. And if the MBA inventory is something that the employer, you know, manager is not willing or ready to invest in, then you can take the free assessment of the love languages, right? Feel free to include my article or research another article, right? And then have a discussion on like, okay, where did you land for your personal love language? And let's see how this kind of relates to the, the workplace. That's how I would recommend kind of going about it. Um, especially when you're dealing with a, um, someone who's probably not as receptive, um, posing it as a culture building exercise um, to boost morale, team culture. Okay. Thanks, Imani. We have another question in the chat, and I think we can unpin Anne and Esther and let them off the hook from being spotlit for now. Um, <laughs> thank you both for sharing from your groups. Um, okay, so this question in the chat, working in France in a different culture and language, love languages isn't even on the horizon. Any advice about how to make individual needs clear in regards to love languages appreciation being clear without that context? Mm. You bring that up if, if that concept is not one that folks are familiar with. Correct, correct. I, I would definitely um, introduce it from the personal side, right? Um, and again, because it's kind of a free assessment, I would encourage you to kind of take it to just see where, where you land. Um, being in France, um, isn't France considered a love language? Yes. French, French, yeah. Kind oh of yeah, love. it is yeah. the language of love. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I would kind of posit it in such a way, like, oh, you know, this language that we speak, you know, is kind. It, it is considered love language, and here is this assessment. Let's just kind of um, take it and see what we come to learn uh, just about ourselves in this, um, and just kind of starting there and using again leveraging. The, the language of, of the culture as a way to kind of like peak interest. That's how I would approach it. Um, and just see what you learn um, from it because it's not necessarily a one size fits all. Do you know how many times I have taken the assessment? The love language is one. I have taken it like four to five times because it depends on where you are at that point in your life, right? And your responses may be different depending on where you are in your life depending on where you are in terms of your workplace. So um, I, I would say just try it, position it as, you know, this is our language and this is what the world knows our language as. Maybe we should look into this, um, this assessment and see what it tells us. I love that spin. <laughs> I love the spin on that, Amani, oh, that's good. creative, right? Yeah, okay. sure. So I would like to, I kind of offered up some suggestions, right? For those of you that are like, okay, well, how can I present this to my team? I'm dealing with this difficult supervisor. Um, and those are just options, right? Um, we know, and I know that it's not always um, as simple as that, right? It may take some effort. Um, and maybe you don't necessarily start directly with the supervisor. Maybe you start with a fellow colleague to then begin the conversation, start lateral, right? And see what happens there. And then it can kind of bubble up and then it's a consensus building prop, you know, proposal uh, to the, the supervisor and manager that is something that the team wants. So it's not just you being put, um, put in the hot seat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Amani. Okay, well, we've reached the end of our time together. I'm so happy to see that so many of you hung on with us through the through the end. I hope everyone enjoyed this session. I know I really did. And um, I'm going to talk to my boss later today about my words of affirmation and, and how we can bring that into our working relationship with one another, though I have to admit she's pretty good at that on her own anyway. Um, so just before we go, um, I just did want to thank all of you for really leaning into this, engaging in this content, 
in community, all of us as Smithies together, um, you're going to receive a post event email from us. Um, and this will include a few things. It's going to include a survey, please complete it. Um, I would love to know kind of your thoughts on this session. It'll help inform our work for future sessions that we'll be holding. Um, that email will also include a link to our LinkedIn group. So we've started this LinkedIn group, Smith Business Network, Careers Connections Community. Please join it, invite your friends to join. We're building a community together and I really would love to see this grow, especially as we all meet each other in these events. It'd be fun to connect on LinkedIn as well. Um, I mentioned future, future sessions. We have two coming up and I'm gonna put our presenters on the spot because they're both here. Um, so on March 23rd, Emily Frank, class of 93 career coach, will be uh, holding a session called Value You, front loading your values throughout career exploration. You're gonna get a link to register for that in, this, in your follow-up email, join us for that. Um, and then Gail Fritzinger, also on the call today, career, career transition specialist, she's gonna hold a session on April 5th called Pivot, Pivot, Pivot. Friends joke, hopefully someone got it, uh, transferable skills and career transitions. So that's on Tuesday, April 5th. Um, so, you know, join us, spread the word. I hope you enjoyed our time together today. I loved being here with all of you and we'll see you again soon, I hope.